Hi Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. Have you ever wanted to be an astronomer? Spending your nights on top of a mountain somewhere just gazing at the Milky Way and pondering what's out there in the universe? Yeah, well, I hate to break it to you, but astronomy is not as all as sexy as it seems to be. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the common misconceptions of a job in astronomy. So let's go. Black holes are deep gravitational wells with huge amounts of mass, some millions of solar masses, packed into a tiny dense point. We're told that the gravity of a black hole is so strong that not even light can escape them. That anyone, even approaching a black hole, would have their time slowed down to a standstill, at least to someone looking in from the outside. Powerful jets and winds are emitted by the black hole as it feeds on the surrounding mass. Yeah, but in reality, what scientists are actually working on and seeing is something like this. Yep, it's not even close to black. In fact, the black hole lives somewhere in there, hidden by the host galaxy that it lives inside. But even then, it's tiny. Even when astronomers built a telescope the size of the Earth, they were only able to see a four pixel resolution black hole. So yeah, black holes are overrated. We know about x-ray machines used in hospitals to examine fractures and broken bones. Pointing an x-ray telescope into the sky, we can locate some of the most energetic events in our universe. What do you expect to see? Maybe you're expecting to see the skeletons of galaxies, but in reality, it's very far from the truth. This is Messier 101 as seen by the digitized Sky Survey 2. And this is what it looks like by ESA's XMM Newton telescope. As you can see, it's not nearly as exciting through an X-ray telescope. Real X-ray observations are typically low resolution, low photon counts. The clusters of galaxies that I work on in my day-to-day -day job are reservoirs of X-ray emitting gas, but in reality, nothing more than fuzzy blobs. Everyone is always excited about when a new exoplanet is detected, especially if it's in the habitable zone. The possibility of another Earth-like planet that perhaps we could one day call home or even the potential for extraterrestrial life and the wonders of how they would have evolved compared to life on Earth. Unfortunately, if you thought the black hole was disappointing, you can only imagine the disappointment of exoplanet images. Our sun is about 1.4 million kilometers in size, whilst the Earth is just 1% of that. So even the nearest stars being light years away from us will only appear as a few pixels in images. Being able to directly observe exoplanets is not impossible, and there have been a few cases. However, these typically are gas giant planets like Jupiter that are less obscured from the bright emission of their host star because they orbit further out. More commonly, scientists working on exoplanets will analyze um, transits looking for dips in the light emitted by the host star as the exoplanet orbits in front of the star blocking out some of its light. We saw earlier the image of Messier 101 and the beautiful spiral arms and bursts of blue young star regions within it. However, it would be misleading to think if you work on galaxies that you would work on anything like that. In reality, for the science, we don't care much about the colour at all. Well, at least not colour in this sense. The colour images here are created from three wave bands of observations, combined together in the RGB channels of an image. A scientist's definition of colour, however, is subtracting one wavelength of light from another one. In most cases, actually, they'll just work with a single wavelength observation, so observations in black and white. Furthermore, not many galaxies are big and well-resolved as this one. 
Due to the volume effect, there are many more galaxies the further out you look. Many of the circular points we see in the sky are not stars, but instead galaxies. They appear like points unless we have powerful telescopes like Hubble and long observation times to resolve them. Lastly, supernova explosions are dying stars, powerful and luminous explosions that end in beautiful supernova remnants like the likes of the Spaghetti Nebula, the Vela Supernova Remnant and the Crab Nebula. But if you think that scientists working on supernova are staring at pictures like these all day, then you'd be wrong. Like exoplanet scientists, people who work on supernova are generally looking at light curves to see how the light emitted from the supernova changes over time. They can fit theoretical models to this and learn about the properties of the supernova, but the images themselves are usually just a speck. Thanks so much for watching this week's video. I hope you found it insightful if you're considering a career in astronomy and also get a better idea of what an astronomer really works on. It's true, most of us don't even own a telescope, myself included. If you enjoyed this week's video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.